When SeaWorld announced in March that it would stop breeding its world-famous killer whales, it sent shockwaves to the marine park industry. The decision was the culmination of years of pushback from animal rights activists and scientific research arguing that keeping these highly intelligent, intensely social animals in captivity, often in isolation, is morally reprehensible. As public pressure to free marine mammals mounts, the SeaWorld decision was likely just the first of many massive changes to the multi-million dollar industry that has operated in the U.S. for nearly 80 years. Let's take a look back at how we got here. In 1938, Marine Land in Florida opens. Flippy, the bottlenose dolphin, becomes the first trained performer in America's first dolphin show. By 1960, wild whale captures are in full swing, with orcas taken out of British Columbia and Washington state waters, many of which are sold to marine parks. Later in the decade, anti-captivity movements began forming, raising ethical and moral arguments against keeping intelligent marine mammals in captive settings. Through the 1970s, SeaWorld and other marine aquarium businesses captured nearly 40% of Washington's southern resident killer whale population, with only about 70 left in the region by the time the practice was banned. In 1972, the U.S. Marine Mammal Protection Act was passed to protect wild and captive animals from harm, but a loophole allowed for captivity and breeding to continue for educational goals. In 1976, the state of Washington banned orca capture. By 1990, British Columbia banned orca capture as well. In 1995, the first targeted campaign demanding the release of a single orca got underway, as conservationists called for the removal of Lolita from her tiny tank at the Miami Seaquarium. The 22-foot-long killer whale has spent more than 46 years in captivity and remains there today. In 2010, Tillicum, a 35-year-old male orca taken from his mother at the age of two, makes international headlines when he drags trainer Don Branchow into his pool at SeaWorld Orlando and kills her. She was the third person killed by the 12,000-pound orca. The tragedy became the centerpiece of the 2012 book, A Death at SeaWorld, and the 2013 documentary, Blackfish. SeaWorld called the film inaccurate and exploitative, but the public image of the marine entertainment theme park was tarnished. In 2014, SeaWorld reported attendance, revenue, and net income declines at its theme parks in San Diego, San Antonio, and Orlando, and its stock dropped by 50%. By 2015, bans against keeping orcas in captivity are proposed in New York and California, and SeaWorld replaced its CEO. In March 2016, SeaWorld announces it is ending its captive orca breeding program and is phasing out live performances that use killer whales. Today, the tide is shifting in the once lucrative world of performing marine mammals. In the United States, at least 13 dolphin exhibits have closed in the last decade, and only four new exhibits have opened. Still, the marine park industry is booming internationally. China, which so far has imported nine killer whales captured in Russia, operates 39 marine parks, and another 14 are under construction. 56 orcas are in captivity at 14 marine parks in eight countries. This includes 29 at SeaWorld parks. SeaWorld says its killer whales will remain in captivity, but marine scientists and activists are developing plans that would allow the animals to one day be retired to huge sea pens, where they could live out their lives in a natural environment, and in the case of captured orcas, possibly be reunited with their families. Visit takepart.com captive to learn more.